of me making this video is because I wanted to take all of my outlandish uh, scientific connections and make them make sense or just begin to. And so this is how I live life. So this is the science behind each part and I just took out certain sections that I thought would um, best help me to explain it and I'm just going to go over it briefly and hopefully in, an, in other videos I can go in more depth. But this should give you a better understanding of what I'm doing. And so I wanted to start off with the idea of quantum entanglement, which goes into um, John Bell's experiments, John, the John Bell inequality, and all of the recent um, information that came out for the 2022 Nobel Prize in physics when it comes to quantum entanglement. And so I wanted to briefly describe this is my reasoning for why connection and meditation is so important, just connecting to whether it be God, your Holy Spirit, higher self, um, your conscious, whatever you want to call it, um, that connection is needed. And so that's why it's always important to know yourself, know your system, because that is you connecting to your higher self, to the part of you that knows all. And so what that is is like i like to think of me being three beings in one so my ego being my mind and body and then my higher self which is the whole um of all of those things all together and so quantum entanglement the bell inequalities in the most recent nobel prize work describes how once something is entangled they are essentially always entangled it doesn't matter where um how far they are or where they are in the world they'll still be quantumly entangled and from when you look at anything that talks about the bell inequalities or quantum entanglement it tells you that it's essentially polar opposites that one is basically positive negative and the or light dark whatever like always opposites of each other quantum entanglement describes basically before these particles are entangled we don't know their properties we don't know their states um, I like to say that this, the particles, before we even measure them, they already have quantitative aspects about them that make up what they are. It isn't until we measure them, until we give it our time, that the, the, the property begins to be known. And so from looking at the Bell inequalities, this is something that's in the air, but from what I've seen is that they say that once something is quantumly quantumly entangled it is always going to give you this opposite right and so if these two pairs always come together they're always going to be opposite of each other and from what I've learned my experiment basically with that is so basically once they're apart they come back together what is their state now and so what I've discovered and I did this experiment on a coin with my roommate I basically took the time to know my system know who Imani is and I took two coins, I took two pennies, and I basically had, had them in my hand and I took one of them and I um, had my roommate take the other one. And she took the other one and when we first tested it, we both came um, opposites, meaning we were both, like one was positive, one was negative, one was heads, one was tails, one was white, one was black. And so she was like, what is this about? And I sat and I took the time to explain her what I, to her what I was doing. What I was doing was I was testing the bell inequalities. I was testing quantum entanglement that because we are before we were quantumly entangled we were different we were separate but then sitting and taking the time to explain to her what i was doing got us on the same page so when i did the experiment again a couple times after that we would look at the pennies and we would keep getting the same side of the same coin because now we're quantumly entangled we're no longer opposites we're on the same um wavelength we're on the same vibration and so i took that idea and i was basically like okay when pairs are quantumly entangled and they sit um, and once they're together, I believe that when they're together for a long period of time, it's like um, how your environment um, can influence you. When you're together for a long period of time, you begin to 
flip the same sides of the coin. So no matter what you do through your actions, if you're going through the same experiences, if you're not really doing anything different, you're always going to get the same side of the coin. So it's basically like um, once you're connected to, let's use people, when you're connected to someone and you start to learn about them, um, you essentially start to be all plus signs or all head sides of the coin. And it's kind of like how when couples are together for a really long time, they start to dress alike, they start to talk alike. It's that same idea. Until you're stopped by an outside force, Newton's law of motion. When you're stopped at law of inertia, when you're stopped by an outside force, in this case, the outside force is something different that's happening. So let's say an experience or let's say um, a, an event happens that is directly opposite to what you're used to. And so that puts you back into your original states of opposites again. So for example, in the real world, this would look like, let's say that same couple that when they first met, they were opposites and then they kept hanging out. They kept being around each other. They kept being on the same system. And so they became the same sides of the same coin, right? Until an experience happens, let's say um, one of the partners gets upset or anything, um, something triggers them, a trauma response or something. Um, and so that trauma response is now going to be different than their partner has experienced before. So now they're flipped back to the opposite particles until they work through it and get back on the same page again. And I wanna make sure my phone is still recording. And so with that idea, I basically took that and was like, okay, so yes, we go through contrast in life, in whatever we come across, but until we can understand that contrast, it'll always be contrast until it gets on our page. And so, do I have two pennies? Yeah. Now let's say I, Imani, the ego, have one penny, right? And my higher self the one in the ether when i'm in meditation has the other penny okay and right now my ego my mind and my body my mind is thinking one thing my body is doing another thing it's different from my higher self it's different from what my higher self wants and so if i have the penny this is on tails and let's say that this is my higher self well i'm in connection with my higher self so they're both on tails but if this was somebody else when you're in connection with your higher self that's essentially different so that their heads in your tails and so the point of meditation is to continue to make action to close the gap so that eventually you're both on the same side of the coin and when you're on the same side of the coin if you've ever played a game called block soar i used to play this game as a kid and what it was is basically you had to make the right moves or you had to be in the right alignment to get to the next level and so to me when you're connecting um to your higher self it starts off with understanding that you are in a quantum entanglement, a connection. So this is the ego, and then this is the higher self. You start off as two separate things. When you come together, you make this match. You're quantumly entangled. Once something is quantumly entangled, it can never be taken apart. It can be loosened up. There can be space made between it. And that space is experience, is things that happen in order to separate you so that you understand because when it's like it's like a rubber band honestly it's like once you're connected you go through experience life pulls at you tugs at you and you go through the experience and the more that you you make action that is in alignment with understanding and why you're going through that moment the closer the closer in you get on that rubber band from like snapping back at you but eventually it's it, it will come back because it's a rubber band it's quantumly entangled you know, eventually that rubber band has to come back together. And then once it's pulled apart again, it's a new experience that you have to go through. Same thing here in life. When you connect with the higher self, with a part of yourself that is different from what you're operating in, and you see that part, and you're like, damn, I want to be on the same side of the coin. So then you go through experiences, you separate. You collapse yourself in time, that's what I'm going to talk about here. You separate, and you understand it. And when you come back to to that thing, when you come back together with your higher self, it's like a it's like a a, a checkup, it's like a evaluation and a review of did these actions align me to the point where we're on the same side of the coin now? And if not, 
then you got to keep going through experience until you get to the same side of the coin, which opens up new opportunities, new experiences in life. That's my first time really explaining quantum entanglement and the bell inequalities of, of something being entangled first and always having an opposite match. In science, it talks about how the opposites are always going to be opposites, but from my experience and my own test of this science is that they will be opposites until you understand. When you understand, it's like you, you, you come across an experience with your higher self, with, with um, connection with other people, and you face a difference. And until you understand, until you get on the same level, on the same side of the coin, you're not going to be able to push through that. You're not going to be able to get through that barrier because it's an energetic barrier that needs to be changed within you. And when you're dealing with other people, it's a lot harder because essentially you're asking a person to flip, to, to change their actions so that you now match. That's why, you know, getting into relationships, whether it be romantic, friendship, dealing with family, you have to understand that they've got a whole other system. So focus on your own system and let the universe kind of bring opportunities to you, but you have to realize that you're moving through those opportunities. And so that's what I think about when I'm quantumly entangled. Science says that they always will be opposite. No, because that doesn't align with consciousness being in evolution. You know, we, we come across an opposite because we have to be on the same side of the coin to get through. And once we're through, we then are met with another opposite. And it just keeps on going. It's like a DNA strand until you keep coming together. You separate and you come together. You separate and you come together. That separation is quantum entanglement. That's polar opposites until you can understand something. That's love. That's unconditional love, what I've been talking about. Until you can understand something, understand your vibration, understand why that's different, then come together. And now you have the knowledge of, of that being different. You have also the knowledge of you thinking different, but you understand why it's happened, why these things had to be polar opposites before they can come together. That's what I think about quantum entanglement. And in, in science, it doesn't talk about how experience, how further influence and interaction with a polar opposite makes you the same. And I take this same idea and I talk about it with my cousin. We talk about how, you know, when you are, not, when you don't know yourself and you're, let's say, in a toxic situation, uh, a toxic relationship, let's say, I always use people because it's easier to explain, but let's say you're in a toxic relationship, it's not going to look different to you because if you lose yourself in that relationship, you're essentially losing your side of the coin and you're just willingly being on the same side of their coin and you're just moving and it doesn't seem different for you because you're on the same side of the coin. This can go for any self-sabotaging self -sabotaging behaviors. This can go for whether it be, again, romantic work relationship. When you're in that muck, so much so and you're not paying attention, you don't realize that you might deserve better. So you stay in that muck, you stay on the same side of the coin until, and, and that's okay because that's what life is about. But when you feel different in your body, you have to be willing to recognize that this is different, recognize that you are two polar opposites. And sometimes understanding is letting something go so that something else can come into your life. Not everything is meant to flip on the same side of the coin. Oh my God, there was other stuff I wanted to talk about, but quantum entanglement and making it make sense goes it's, it's so much more. Perhaps I'll just do like a little mini series. This was quantum entanglement to me, is understanding that once you're quantumly entangled with something, you recognize that it's opposite, that it's your duality in, in play. And it is, your under, it is your job to understand the duality, understand you, you feel like you, you don't deserve what you have right now because perhaps inside of you, you feel like there's more coins that you have to flip over. So you have to understand why you're in a certain position, why you're attracting certain pennies into your life. And it is your job to get through the pennies, through action, through actually showing up with awareness and being like, hey, this is a direct opposite. Why are you an opposite here? Why are you in my life right now? What are you trying to teach me? And when you can understand that, you flip the coin. And it's just like when my roommate, when I came to her at first, she didn't know what I was doing. We were opposites. But when I told her, 
I created an interference pattern with sound waves, with sound vibrations. I spoke to her and she ingested it. She took it in. She began to understand what I was doing to where we were now on the same side of the coin. And I began to, I, I began to test that when my cousin came over. I forgot actually, I wanted to test the fact. I was like, you know, I told my roommate, I was like, if this is true, I was like, my cousin should have a, have a different coin than us. But we had spent, I forgot to test the coin when she came into the house. And so we had spent so much time talking and going in depth and psychoanalyzing psycho that when we looked at the coin, we all had the same size of the coin. When I finally remembered, she was like, oh, you're supposed to test it. We were all on the same side of the coin because we were all vibrationally on the same level. That's how life works. Now taking that same idea, whether it be people, whether it be experiences, opportunities, make sure that you are on the same level. And honestly, you can do this with the pennies. I believe that you can set an intention essentially. Let's say um, we shake the pennies up. They go out whatever side. This one in my right hand is who Imani is, right? Tails. And this is the things that she's doing now, the, the desires that she has, you know, are they for her? And it's um, heads. Oh, it just went to tails because I made action. So now these pennies, I know this is going to be so confusing, but basically these pennies are on the same side of the coin. When it was heads at first, but then I made an action and it went and it just naturally fell back on tails. I probably sound crazy, but you know, crazy as being a free thinker is deciding to change and, and get out there. There's so many things that I have to talk about, but I believe this is a good stop for quantum entanglement before I confuse you even longer. When you create an interference interference pattern, when you have experienced something, recognize and take the time to look around you and, and be like, okay, what is opposite? What is different? Why is it in my reality? And what can I learn from this? What is it trying to teach me? And when you can understand, when you can make actions towards that opposite, as scary as it is, moving out of our comfortability is uncomfortable because we're switching sides of the coin now. But it's not us. Well, yeah, it's not us. What we're doing is we're recognizing it and we're, we're coming up to the opposite. This is on tails right now facing you and this is on heads. We're coming up to that opposition to that adversity and we're understanding it we're spending time on it until one day the coin flips our outside environment flips and it starts to match what we are when we recognize what we are and sometimes that opposite that opposition that adversity is a thought process it's a mental mode that goes into my um To, to my paper, I, or I made a p free PDF about becoming you. Mental modes, how when we carry certain mental modes, so certain mindsets, they, they interact and they make us um, behave different. And we will carry that behavior based off of that mental mode. But sometimes that mental mode that, be, that, we, that we are carrying that is influencing a behavior is tied to a trauma, is tied to family issues, is tied to childhood trauma. And not that trauma is necessarily that bad. I believe that when we think about trauma, we're like thinking like the worst of the worst. Sometimes trauma is recognizing that someone didn't have the emotional intelligence to help you have the emotional intelligence and move forward in life. That's when I start getting into neuron transmitters. I think I'm going to stop it for now. And if you want to see where I go from quantum entanglement, there's going to be a video on the uncertainty principle and how I use that to help release expectations. Hey, listen. Oh,